miss the Subzeru's festival, right? Let's hurry and find Dunyarzad! Paimon thinks she must be around the Grand Bazaar, since she showed us around there last time. Just as promised. Traveler and Paimon. I'm so glad that you two came back to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. <laughs> Indeed. The festival's tomorrow. We've been preparing for so long that I can't help but feel a little nervous. There's no need to be nervous. Paimon's sure that Lesser Lord Kusanali will feel everyone's gratitude. <laughs> Thanks, Paimon. I hope that everyone who comes to the festival will also have a good time. Speaking of which, um, did you manage to make your way to Port Ormos? Discover anything over there? Of course we went! A lot of things happened there. <sighs> I see. Sounds like you two had another exciting adventure. If there is another chance, I would love to join. <sighs> My lady, if you went to Port Ormos in your current state, we'd both be in for a lifetime of trouble. It's called covert protection. Keeping an ear out for what's going on around my employer is part of the job. It's all right, Dia. I nearly said I would like to go. I know better than to think my body could handle it. <sighs> the festival's tomorrow. I've been doing nothing but causing trouble for you. So, Dia, please take some time to relax. I'll be fine. Mm, even when you put it that way, it still doesn't feel right. Don't worry, my guardian knight. <sighs> okay, fine, but only tonight. Tomorrow's a big day, and many no-good scumbags are gonna try to take advantage of that. Yeah. Oh, uh, you two must be exhausted from your long journey back to the city. Uh, my apologies for not realizing this sooner. I've already prepared a room for you to rest. Please follow me. Whoa, you're so thoughtful. Paimon's so ready. Here we are. It's also fairly close to where I've been staying. It looks really nice. <laughs> Not at all. It, just tell me more about your adventures when you next get the chance. That's Paimon's specialty. Paimon can tell you stories next time. Oh, if you don't mind, how about we all walk around together tomorrow? All of my friends will be working the festival, and Dia is still insisting on her covert protection. Yeah. It'll be pretty hard to relax and enjoy the festival if Dia's constantly hovering over you, right? Then let's meet at the nearby bazaar first thing tomorrow morning. Have a great night. It's a deal! Good night, Dunyarzad! I may be too excited to fall asleep tonight. See you tomorrow. Paimon's starting to really look forward to the Sub-Zero Festival, too! Will there be lots of yummy food? Oh, no, no. Thinking about food is just gonna keep Paimon up all night. The earlier we sleep, the better. Let's go inside, Traveler. Ah, did we oversleep? We should go meet Dunyarzad right away. Traveler, Paimon, I've been waiting for you two. Good morning, Dunyarzad. We must have overslept a little bit. <laughs> Not at all. I arrived early. Oh, today is finally here. I must cherish every moment as if it were gold. You've worked so hard for this day. You gotta enjoy it to the fullest. <laughs> you know it. Oh, it's just that, um, as expected, I had some trouble falling asleep last night. I'm hoping my body won't be too much of an issue today. Well, shall we? 
Let's start with the stalls over there. Many vendors came out of the blue to support the event, and they insisted on covering costs themselves. Let's go give them some business. They paid for everything out of pocket? Oh, sounds like they're not in this just for the Mora. <laughs> they all said that contributing to a lively festival atmosphere is more important than money. Especially since we don't often get to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. This is a stall offering foods from the Haftmewa feast. Oh, you could tell straight away. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. Mushrooms, flowers, and all kind of fruit? It's all vegetarian stuff. Oh, Paimon's a little disappointed. So, what's the Haftmewa feast you mentioned just now? It's another sub festival tradition. People used to set their tables with seven different foods. Generally speaking, the most common selections were foods like Rukushifa mushrooms, lunar lotuses, Sumero roses, sunsetias, kapalatas, hara fruits, and zaytun peaches. So, the Subzero Festival is a vegetarian holiday? <laughs> you don't have to be a vegetarian to enjoy the spread. We just use the seven foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. Wait! vegetarian food to represent the Dendro Archon. Then wouldn't the Pyro Archon's festival be full of food like roasted fowl, juicy meatballs, grilled steak? Oh, Traveler, we have to go to Natlon as soon as possible! <laughs> I hope your wish comes true one day, Paimon. Thanks! Alright, how about we also check out some of these other stalls? Dear customers, would you like to try your hand at alchemical divination? What's alchemical divination? Those two things sound like they'd be fun to try together. Right? I thought the same when I first heard about it. It is said to be a mysterious craft invented by none other than Lesser Lord Kusanali herself. So, how does it work? It's quite simple. After you give me any two alchemical reagents, I'll use them to perform a random transmutation. Sure sounds random. So random that it will probably fail. That is precisely what we need. After the transmutation fails, your one and only diviner here will interpret the remnants. Well, according to Lesser Lord Kusanali, everything is interconnected and all that occurs can be traced back to fate. You could say this is a pearl of old wisdom. Why does everything sound so much more credible when Dunya Azad says it? Are you guys working together? So that's the true wisdom behind it. This young lady sure knows her stuff. So, how about it? Want to give it a try? Okay, one moment. Hmm... It's the moon. Paimon wants to take a look too! Uh... Is it? It looks more like a pie that Paimon bit into. Hmm... Generally speaking, the moon signifies... It means... Uh, wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, I remember now. It means illusions and lies. Illusions and lies? That sounds rather ominous. Yes, but this book says that if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. He's not even trying to hide his book anymore. Naturally, fate will only ever show you the beginning of a journey. It is up to you to forge your own ending. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> uh. Guess that was still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stop. 
They say the sub Zerus festival was very lively a long, long time ago. Large flower carriages used to parade through the city. As they headed towards Port Ormos, people would throw flowers, candy, and liquor all along the way. Dunyarzad's eyes are sparkling right now. Oh, I wish I could have seen that spectacle. But if you ask me, I'm sure Nilu's dance of sub Zerus will be just as impressive. Attention! Soldiers, fall into formation if you want any Yalda candies. It's a weird guy with a weird hat! Hey! It's Dunyarzad! Wow! wow. <laughs> Miss Dunyarzad, the children love you even more than the Yalda candies. In the few short days it took to prepare for the Sabzerus festival, the children have all grown very fond of you. Uh, um, the Hallowed Knight of Flowers. It's an honor that you know my name. <coughs> Attention! In the name of Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, I commend you on your contributions to the glorious Sabzerus festival. All right, little soldiers. Take your Yalda candies, and don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed! Yes, Knight Ferris! Uh, just what is going on here? <laughs> Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another sub festival icon, and one immensely popular with children. In the past, the actor portraying Ferris would also sit on a flower carriage. It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can make such wonderful memories today. As are we to you, Vihar. <laughs> oh, not at all. Oh, speaking of tradition, do you want some Yalta candies? They're a festival staple, and I happen to have some boxes readied here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Whichever one? Um... Don't these boxes all look the same? <laughs> that is the fun part. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Ooh, those all sound pretty good. And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Huh? What's up with those two flavors? Oni kabuto is a little spicier than lizard tail. Tanyarzad, you, you tried them before? Traveler, help Paimon pick one. Paimon wants the Sunsetia flavor. It's all right. Paimon believes in you. I also believe in your intuition. Great. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Attention! That's unfortunately Lavender Melon. Oh, Paimon thought you survived so many epic battles because you had incredible luck. But looks like Paimon was wrong. The Sunsetia flavored candy was in box number four. How about this? The most important thing is that everyone has a good time at the festival. So please, take both boxes. Really? Thanks a lot, Knight of Candies! It's Knight of Flowers. Not Knight of Candies. <laughs> Paimon really wilted the carriageless Knight of Flowers. They all basically sound the same. We got our candy, so let's keep going. Oh, uh, actually, I just remembered that I left something behind. Um, since you're here, can you come with me to get it? Dunyarzad, you probably forgot because you're so excited about the sub Zeros Festival. <laughs> ah, how embarrassing. We're too late. Who knew the little lady was such an early riser? I know, right? Hey, wait a minute. Puss! Isn't that her? Oh, that most certainly is. We're in luck. She's walking right into our clutches. Those Eremites don't look like they're up to any good! 
Who are you? I don't believe the Homayamis hired you. <laughs> That's right. We haven't received any of their mora, but... I wonder how much the Humayanis would shell out to get you back. They're a gang of kidnappers! Traveler, hurry and protect Dunyarzad! Hey, did you scumbags even consider that the Homayanis might have hired a merc that outclasses you? You... Dia! Dia the Flame Mane! No wonder we mercs haven't heard anything about you for so long. You sold your unruly mane to the highest bidder. Don't speak so disrespectfully. My family started working with her as gratitude for her past kindness to us. Don't worry about it, my lady. Just some friendly banter between mercs. One punch and those rabid dogs will expose themselves for what they really are. <laughs> Aren't your claws all dull by now? Don't get too cocky! Traveler, take Miss Dunyarzad to a safe location. No! We're gonna stay and help! There's too many of them! Mm, you're right. All right, fine! Please be careful, Dia. Don't waste your time worrying about me. This is my job. Look out for yourself. After I've wiped the floor with them, I'll go find you all. Are you okay? You look a little pale. Are you in shock? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. My body always reacts like this whenever I exert myself too much. You sure you're okay? I'll be fine after some rest. I'm more worried about Dia. After all, none of this would have happened if I hadn't insisted on coming out today. Yeah, don't worry. My lady, traveler, found ya. Dia! You took care of them so fast! Any more of them? Or rather, did anyone follow you? Dia, your arm! Oh, this? Ah, I'm fine. It's just a scratch. Normally, they wouldn't have been able to land a hit on me at all, but I'm still getting used to this new greatsword. Please, let me take a closer look. Come on, it's nothing. Us mercs aren't as fragile as you think. Hold on, you said something about a new greatsword. Uh, what happened to the one you were using before? Uh, about that. Well, I sold it, because I was low on Mora. Stuff like this happens every now and then. It can't be. The anonymous donation that was used for the venue's final round of preparations? <laughs> uh, hey, Miss Dunyarzad, I wasn't trying to make you cry, and I'm not gonna lose my commission because I made my employer cry, am I? <laughs> okay, making your employer cry won't affect your commission, but selling your weapon without permission and getting hurt? I'll have to reevaluate your performance. <laughs> You're so unreasonable, my lady. <laughs> Thank you very much, dear. Don't be like that. I get embarrassed really easily. Condition. Traveler, can you take her somewhere to rest? I'll look around the area to make sure we're safe from an ambush. Truly, I'm sorry for the trouble, everyone. Are you 
you feeling better, Dinyarzad? <laughs> yes, much better. Just give me a few moments and I'll be good to go. I didn't realize you were concerned about it. I guess I shouldn't continue to keep it a secret. I was actually born with Elazar. It's terminal now. Can't believe it's Elazar! Oh, uh, you've already heard of Elazar. In that case, you probably know about its severity. Sumero's current medical advancements still haven't been able to find a cure. The disease's progression can only be delayed through environmental therapy. Dunyarzad. There's no need to be sad. I've always lived with Elazar and I came to terms with it a long time ago. Compared to the simple fact that I'm afflicted with this, its effects on my life have been much more painful. I know that my family loves me dearly. They've done all they can to provide the best environment for me, so that I can live for that much longer. However, I know I will one day succumb to this. Did you know? Before I ran away from home this time, the world outside of my home didn't even know that I existed. Since I was a child, all I could do was sit on my bed and stare at everything outside of my window. I'm sure my family's worried and disappointed in me for running away, but I... I just didn't want to have any regrets. I wanted to meet other people. To me, there's nothing more beautiful than being able to meet and speak with others. Not to mention the incredible time spent preparing for the festival. The joy on everyone's faces here, and all the support I've received from friends like Dia. This way, when my final day does arrive, it will be less sorrowful. At the very least, many people will remember that I once existed in this world, right? Uh, as long as you don't forget Paimon, Paimon also won't forget about you. Uh. No, even if you forget Paimon, Paimon will still remember you. <laughs> oh, thank you too so much. I apologize for the depressing conversation. This is... this is out of character for me. To be honest, Lesser Lord Kusanali gave me the courage to do all of this. If it weren't for her encouragement, I wouldn't have taken that first step. Thanks. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. Oh, right! Isn't it almost time? Huh? Almost time for what? Isn't the dance of Subzerus about to begin? It's the part of the festival that I've been looking forward to the most. Nilu will recreate that legendary scene with her most splendid dancing. And the Subzeros Festival will conclude amid everyone's applause and blessings. And with that, my wish will also... Then what are we waiting for? Let's go to the stage! Yeah, we should still make it in time. Were you not aware that the law prohibits this type of performance from taking place without prior permission? Over there! Someone's yelling at Nilu! I think I just saw the Academia's Grand Sage. Why is he here in person? But the dance of Subzerus is one of the key parts of the Subzerus Festival. If we can't perform it... The Subzerus Festival. The law also prohibits the private hosting of large-scale religious festivals. Only the Academia can host such an event. If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? The Academia was originally responsible for the Subzerus Festival, but they failed this responsibility for many years. I need to speak with them. This is a hard pill to swallow, but... You're right. Things would only get worse. Art. Dance. Aren't you ashamed of pursuing such frivolous and meaningless activities in this land of knowledge and reason? 
Our Archon created the utopia that is Sumeru City for all scholars who sought validity, verity, and truth, while people like you wish to defile it. No. I believe that our Archon never rejected the arts. Even the Goddess of Flowers dedicated a dance to her. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. We will announce it to the public later via the Akasha. Understood. I will inform him when I return. Hmm. The Sub-Zeru's Festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Nilu, are you okay? Oh, Dunyarzad. You all saw that just now? The Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. Yeah. Let's go somewhere the Academia can't find us and perform there. Ah. Uh, but how do we let everyone know? And what about the atmosphere on the stage? Or... We could get people to block them off so they can't interrupt the performance. Ah... Uh, no. They just threatened to investigate the organizers. If we were caught... Nilu, it's alright. Don't worry about it. But you've been looking forward to the dance of Sub-Zero so much! And I know how important this festival is to you. I don't want you to have any regrets. It's okay. Seeing you care this much about my feelings is more than enough. It would be too risky to continue the sub festival at this point. I don't want to get everyone in trouble. If you say so. But... You can sneak out for the next sub festival, right? We'll make sure the next one is a smashing success. The next one. Yes. Okay. It's a promise. It will be a smashing success. Paimon can't believe this is how things turned out. Those heartless geezers. It really is okay. There's nothing we can do about it. <sighs> Still, I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilu's dance. <sighs> a lot happened today. It's a shame the festival ended the way it did. Nilu and Dunyarzad promised to make the next sub Zero's festival a success. But Dunyarzad is running out of time. Yeah. Oh. All connections have been secured to construct the most stable framework possible. The project has entered its most critical phase. Power has begun to flow from... early. Uh, you seem kind of tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Shall we go? Let's start with the stalls over there. Sure! Uh, Traveler, why are you just standing there? Let's get going! Ooh, they're selling food over that way! Let's go take a look! Hmm. 
This is a stall offering foods from the Huffed Mewa Feast. You are quite well informed, miss. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. They're all plants! Oh, Paimon's a little disappointed. Actually, what is the Huffed Mewa Feast you mentioned just now? It's one of the Subzerus Festival's traditions. People used to set their tables with seven different foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. appear to be in the form of the moon. Really? I thought it looked like some kind of food. Hmm. The moon signifies... Hmm. It's escaping me for now. Wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, right. <laughs> it means illusions and lies. But if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. Understood. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> Guess that was still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. So, where to next? Soldiers, now that you have your Yalta candies, don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed! Yes, Knight Varys! What's going on? Is this a play? Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another Subzeris festival icon and one immensely popular with children. <laughs> it's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can meet the Knight of Flowers. Oh, do you want some Yalta candies? I happen to have some boxes ready here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Uh, what's to pick? Don't these boxes all look the same? <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Ooh, how interesting! And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Ugh, why do those flavors even exist? Hmm. Traveler, help Paimon pick one. Paimon wants to eat the sunsetia flavor. Great! These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Ah, excellently chosen. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. Why'd you run here in such a hurry? 
So that's it. You're intentionally doing things you usually wouldn't and seeing if you still get that same feeling of deja vu. Welcome, you two. Are you here for lunch? What would you like to eat? Got it. You don't look like you're from these parts, but I gotta say, you got good taste. <laughs> I'll give this order to the kitchen. Coconut charcoal cake? Isn't it that... that burned thing that didn't look tasty at all? Oh, Paimon understands what you're trying to do now. You'd never normally order something like this. That... thing? Are you really gonna eat it? Uh... isn't this... going a bit too far? Huh... how was it? The look on your face is telling Paimon that it tasted awful. Then... you mean... We were just talking about how gross it looked! So, would this be a case of taste bud deja vu? Paimon also gets the impression that we've been here many times, even though we are regulars. Um, how about we go out again and try something else? Sitting by yourself on that bench over there. What a coincidence, Dunyarzad. We meet again. Uh, why are you sitting here all by yourself? Oh, I ran into some kidnappers just now, but thankfully Dia came to my rescue. I started to feel unwell after that, so I sat down here. Kidnappers? Oh my goodness, are you hurt? I'm okay. Dia's arm got scratched, but it isn't serious. Whew. That's a big relief. But, Dunyarzad, you seem a little down today. It's the Subzerus Festival, and you've been looking forward to it so much! Not at all. I've always been like this. Excessive physical exertion or strong emotions tend to aggravate my illness. Besides, no matter how amazing today may be, it is but a single day. After however many more days, my time will come to an end. Paimon doesn't quite follow you, and Paimon feels like something's really got you down right now. It really is fine. I don't mind. Huh? Did something happen? Dunyarzad, have you ever felt deja vu? You know, like when you've already experienced something that's happening right now? Deja vu? No. But my days have been the same for years now. Even if I were feeling deja vu, I suppose I would already be used to it. Oh, Paimon sees. Then, is it only the two of us? It's almost time. Huh? Time for what? Nilu's Dance of Subzerus is about to begin. Let's go. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. We will publicly announce it later through the Akasha. Understood. 
I will inform him when I return. <sighs> the Sub Zero's festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. The Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. It's okay. There's nothing we can do about it. But you've been really looking forward to this. I don't want you to have any regrets. It truly is unfortunate, but I don't want to cause trouble for anyone. Didn't the Grand Sage say that he might investigate the organizers? True, but... <sighs> well, okay. I'll just have to try again next year. The next festival. I probably won't be around by then. Wait, what did you just say? Uh, no, nothing. I'll be heading back to rest. Thank you for your help, everyone. Paimon can't believe what those heartless geezers did! Ah! Did Dunyarzad already go back? We should also return and get some sleep. Continue to monitor the variances in the data, and find the cause as soon as possible. <sighs> Why does Paimon feel so tired after so much sleep? Uh, anyway, we should go meet Dunyarzad right away. Not at all. I arrived early. Huh? Paimon thinks you sound kinda tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Uh, shall we go? Let's start with the stalls over there. Great idea! Let's get going! Traveler? It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can enjoy the sub -Zero's festival. Oh, are you interested in Yalda candies? I have some boxes of candy here. Pick whichever one you want. Hmm, not much of a choice. All these boxes look the same. <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Mmm, they all sound pretty tasty. And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Huh? What were those last two? Mmm, she'll help me choose. Paima wants to eat the sunsetia flavor. No problem. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? 
Oh, I like your confidence. No hesitation at all. Oh, congratulations! Number four is indeed Sunsetia. already knew which flavor was in each box. What? She was right about all of them? That couldn't have been luck. How, how is this possible? I packed all those boxes this morning and they've been sealed ever since. You couldn't have known beforehand. Mind reading? X-ray vision? Or some kind of magic trick? This is way too freaky. Traveler? already know that this isn't your first sub festival, don't you? I'm sure you already know how to use this. A knowledge capsule? Where did you get it? What's inside? You should use it too, Paimon. Uh... You know Paimon? Well... This seems kind of sketchy, but Paimon feels like this is what we should do. What the? This is our 20th time at the Sub-Zero's festival? Huh? No. The 30th? 40th? Just how many times have we been to the Sub-Zero's festival? Have we been trapped in a single day? If it weren't for you, we wouldn't have even realized... What the heck was inside that knowledge capsule? Hmm... Your memories are still scrambled? Try your best to remember. 
This isn't the first time we've met, and I answered that question a long time ago. Uh, let Paimon think. Oh, it's coming back! Meeting you was the real catalyst for restoring our memories, and the knowledge capsule was just your means of showing our minds the way. Uh, what about everyone else? Why are you only helping the two of us? Your sense of deja vu is stronger than everyone else's, yes? As for an explanation... You two received the blessing of Dendro. And you also have special, sensitive constitutions. It was as if a single sheet of paper was separating those memories from your consciousness. A familiar question. I think this is the seventh time you asked that. As you can see, she isn't doing well. You probably sensed it too. The Dunyarzad you were just with is different from the first Dunyarzad you met. That first Dunyarzad is in front of you right now and... She doesn't have a lot of time left. <laughs> Looks like you're almost done sorting out your brain. Oh yeah, I'm Nahida. Good, you passed the test. What's happening? You can awaken our memories, and you seem like you know what's going on. Oh, wait, please don't tell Paimon even you don't know. Everything in this world runs in a loop. This cycle is called a samsara. You, me, and everyone else are all stuck inside a one-day samsara. As for the truth, that's on you to find out. If you were told the truth instead of discovering it yourselves, it would literally blow your mind. I don't know how you'd be after that. I can only give you surface-level help, like bits of information and subtle hints. For the rest of the time, I'll be doing all I can to slow down Dunyarzad's illness. She looks like she isn't doing well at all. Her illness gets worse after each Sub-Zero's festival. If we can break out of the samsara, I might be able to save her. But as things are right now, she's just a small bird in the sky that's about to lose its last feathers. All I can do is raise a gale to delay her fall. You sure love to use weird analogies. <laughs> analogies are wonderful tools. They let you use existing knowledge to understand unfamiliar things. Okay, so, with what you know so far, what do you think the truth is? What's happening right now seems to have happened before. This feeling has been getting stronger and stronger. <sighs> that doesn't sound right. I, I need to care. My mind feels exhausted, even though I haven't done too much thinking. <sighs> what is going on? The moon, illusions, and lies. What do they all mean? <sighs> that doesn't sound right. I, I need to carefully think things through. The moon, illusions, and lies. Grand Sage said, go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. <sighs> Did he mean something more? doesn't sound right. I, I need to carefully think things through. We've already experienced the sub -Zeru's festival many times. And the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. <sighs> I can't. 
can't seem to cohesively piece everything together. <sighs> that should be it. The flow of time is endlessly cycling within one single day. A time loop. <sighs> You've given similarly wrong answers in the past. A pity. Still the wrong answer? Paimon thought that made a lot of sense. It feels like time's just repeating itself. A simple time loop can't explain some of the phenomena. You two are still missing a lot of information. Unfortunately, I can't give you any more hints. Zeru's festival is happening every day, but that doesn't mean we can waste an infinite amount of them. Hurry and find the truth before today's festival ends. Let's think about our current situation. To save Dunyarzad, we have to escape the samsara of the Subzeru's festival. And to do that, we need to figure out what's happening. The truth. Nahida rejected the idea of a time loop, so... We must have missed something, right? Paimon's memories say that we've already done this many times, but... Let's go talk to people again. It's more productive than sitting here and scratching our heads. Why don't we start with... Those stall owners! Hey there! Hey, it's you guys again. Where's your cultured friend? She... Uh, she's feeling a little unwell. I see. Did you come back to buy something? I guarantee the freshness of my products. I harvested them from the forest just yesterday. Huh? What brought this about? I hurried back from the forest yesterday, and I'm selling produce here today. I haven't felt anything strange. Hmm, um... To put it another way, if you really, really think about it, was yesterday truly yesterday? Did you actually come back from the forest yesterday? What kind of philosophical nonsense is this? Are you two daydreaming? Didn't you know that no one dreams in Sumeru? Go somewhere else if you want to find someone to daydream with. <laughs> uh, he actually has a point. Is this a dream? Is everyone dreaming? Hmm, true. It's so weird that people here don't dream. Why is that? Anyway, if this all really were just a dream, we would have woken up a long time ago. Let's keep asking around. Oh, it's you two. Was my divination so accurate that you felt compelled to compliment me in person? I knew it! I told you, the god's divination is highly accurate. You just hadn't fully understood its significance yet. <laughs> You're really excited about this, huh? That's exactly why we came back. Help us better understand it. Uh, help you better understand it? W well, <laughs> that isn't exactly what I excel at. So, you're admitting that you don't have a clue? Anyway, what kind of situation did you get into? Huh? Uh, hold on a second. I thought you guys just lost your wallet or, or fell for a scam. What you just said... Are you serious? Does that kind of thing actually happen in real life? I knew you weren't going to believe it. Marvelous. Truly marvelous. I believe you. 
Recall the interpretation of your divination. The moon, illusions, and lies. It really felt like an omen. When you say it like that, the divination does sound like it's related to what's going on. Can you read any more into it? I believe that the Archon's revelations are never more than vague hints. Anything more specific is beyond the reach of mere mortals. The book only says, if you trust your instincts and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. So that's how it is. Looks like fortune telling is just fortune telling. It's no good for practical problems. We haven't made any progress. Who else can we talk to? Hmm, Paima remembers that we tried talking to her a couple of times, but she always thinks we're playing pranks on her. You think she'll brush us off again? Yeah. If we tap into Dia's strong sense of responsibility as a mercenary, then she'll definitely take us seriously. Hmm, at this time of day, Dia's probably just finished beating up those kidnappers. Let's go find her! I'm fine, my lady. It's just a scratch. Perfect timing! Both of you are here! Paimon, Traveler, you came at just the right time. Listen, there was a dangerous ga- Huh? You saw? Then why didn't you jump in earlier? If someone was protecting Miss Dunyar's odd, I could've went all out. <sighs> anyway, can you do something for me? You want the Traveler to take Dunyar's odd somewhere to rest up while you check to see if there's still any kidnappers around. Did Paimon get that right? How did you know what I was going to say? We need to say something convincing. People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. <sighs> that doesn't sound right. I, I need to carefully think things through. The moon, illusions, and lies. <sighs> what do they all mean? <sighs> that doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think things through. Dia sold her greatsword to raise additional funds. And then she was injured because she wasn't used to her new weapon. Tell her, Traveler! Uh, I didn't tell anyone about that. Including Miss Dunyarzad. You couldn't have known. And just now, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. What's going on? All right, so this is the situation. <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe what you just told me. First, let me make something clear. Most of us desert dwellers might not be the scholarly type, but we do have basic common sense. She's quieter than usual. Uninterested in anything, and really gloomy. Yeah, she isn't the same as before, but her parents said that this is how she was like at first. Huh? At first? I don't quite understand what you're all talking about. I'll go rest on the bench over there. My lady, are you angry? All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt since you knew about my greatsword. Let's make this a quick trip. Miss Dunyarzad isn't completely safe here. Nahida! We brought a friend! Are you busy? I thought I told you that it won't help to bring anyone here. We just wanted her to see the real Dunyarzad's condition. The real Dunyarzad? Uh, where? And who are you talking to? Huh? Uh, I told you that you two are special. Other people can't see me or Miss Dunyarzad here.
Hold on. Over there. Is that? Wow. How perceptive. Does she have invisible antennae? Miss Dunyarzad, she's... She's lying down here, isn't she? How's she doing? Her condition's really bad, and she's basically in a coma. How did you know she was here? I can sense her aura. I... <clears throat> there are also lingering feelings of something like regret or disappointment. <sighs> what happened? Do you believe us now? The Subzero's festival has been repeating itself. So, you think the sages are behind this? Yeah, they've always been against us. Wouldn't surprise me if they're using the Akasha to intentionally repeat the Subzero's festival as a sick joke. Hmm, you have a point. Aside from the Dendro Archon, the Academia sages are the only ones in Sumeru who could pull off something like this. Maybe there's more to the Akasha than we know. Right! Didn't you awaken our memories using something that looked like a knowledge capsule? That means you must know something about the Akasha! The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. A Gnosis can do that? No wonder the Akasha is so magical. It's being powered by the Gnosis of Sumeru's Archon. So, uh, this Nahida you mentioned, what did she say? She said, and Paimon quotes, The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. Compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and grants knowledge to the people. Mm, wait. I get the grants knowledge part. That's what people have always used the Akasha for. But compiling the entire populace's wisdom? How does that work? Did she mean that the sages enter new knowledge into the Akasha? Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. What do you think? Okay. Nahida said, The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. <sighs> that doesn't sound right. I, I need to carefully think things through. My mind feels exhausted, even though I haven't done too much thinking. <sighs> what is going on? You mean the Akasha is causing our mental fatigue? Huh. Now that I think about it, my head's been feeling unusually heavy. When the desert dwellers set off on their quest for knowledge, a sage once said, knowledge always comes at a price. Compiling the entire country's knowledge. You think the Akasha pulled a 180 and is extracting information from us? Who knows? The Akasha can put knowledge into our heads, so who's to say that it can't also poke around in there? We don't know any specifics. What's the point of doing something like that? Just think about it. If you could combine the knowledge of every single person in Sumeru, then you can basically turn Sumeru City into a single massive brain. This hive mind could make breakthroughs and problems that even the smartest geniuses can't crack. An excellent deduction. And the analogy comparing Sumeru City to a massive brain? <sighs> I love it. In that case, we should take off our Akasha terminals right away. Maybe that'll solve this problem. Yeah. I was only wearing this for show in the first place. Didn't expect the sages to cook up such a conspiracy. <sighs> Mark my words. When this is over, I'm getting evidence and exposing this whole thing to the public. 
How does everyone feel? Huh? What is it? Oh, that! Paimon knows what you're talking about! It's a single soft beep that sounds like it's coming from the Akasha Terminal. The sound of a beep? Could it be a prompt tone for when the Akasha is operating? That's probably an important clue. We weren't using our terminals, but we heard a beep anyway. Traveler, did you hear that? I heard it too. Our ears aren't messing with us. There was definitely a beep, but it sounded like it was coming from inside my head. We took off our Akasha terminals. Phase runtime has exceeded its expected length. At this rate, there may be casualties. But we cannot lose all of our progress. remembers everything! <laughs> Good. You adapted quickly this time. We definitely took off our Akasha terminals last night, but we still heard that beep. Why is that? <sighs> but now we can at least confirm one thing. The Akasha definitely has something to do with whatever's trapping us in this cycle. Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Why would the Akasha go this far if all it wants is everybody's wisdom? It's extremely difficult for lab rats in an experiment to understand why they're being treated the way they are. If we're lab rats, then what are you? Mihira, you've never told us anything about yourself. Hmm... I guess... I'm the moon. The moon? Wasn't that the result of our divination? Anyway, knowing who I am won't help you get closer to the truth, so you should focus on other things. Don't get distracted and miss any clues. <sighs> okay then. Dia helped us a lot yesterday, so let's go find her. If Paimon's reading the time correctly, those kidnappers should be showing up soon. There you are. I've already taken care of those kidnappers. My lady, did you get hurt? Huh? Dia? What's wrong? Why are you both gawking at me like that? You... you didn't get hurt this time! Huh? What do you mean, this time? Why are you so surprised that I managed to get out unscathed? Those kids were amateurs. you know about my great sword? I haven't told anyone about it. Please, don't tell Miss Dunyarzad. So Dia's lost her memories after all. Anything strange? You already know that I got a new great sword. Hmm, if I had to say something, it's weird how such a new weapon could feel so familiar. It's as if already used it to fight a countless number of battles. You're saying that although you don't remember using it, your body feels like it does? That's right. Both mercenaries and warriors heavily rely on muscle memory. Only knowing the theory of battle won't get you anywhere. Traveler, what do you think? Yeah! Paimon's feeling really hopeful! I have no clue what you two are talking about, but it's still dangerous here, so... 
So you want us to take Dunyar's odd somewhere else to rest while you check if there are still more kidnappers around, right? How did you know what I was gonna say? Can you read minds? Uh, uh, forget it. Go and do your thing. Getting injured, everything seems to have stayed the same. Hmm. Listen, Nahida, we found out that Dia got out just fine today, even though she got injured every other time she fought the kidnappers. Do you think the samsara has been broken? Have we saved Dunyarzad? Really? Good job on all that progress. Get some good sleep tonight. Hey, what kind of an answer is that? Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. How many todays has it been? Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist as anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless of Zero's festival. Okay, okay, no Paimon's brain is already shut down. <laughs> That's why it makes no sense to waste your energy thinking about things you will learn tomorrow. Get some good rest. You know, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety dookie away. Uh, huh? Hold on, what did you just say? Did Paimon hear you correctly? Huh? People always say they feel a sense of relief after they take a duke duke. That's why I suggested you could try that. Is that so strange? Uh, it's so strange and so against common sense that... Paimon's at a loss for words! You were sounding kind of smart just a minute ago. Yeah, even though it's happy and lively at the Sub-Zero's festival every day, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really gotten to relax. Ugh. Let's go back to our room. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, these sacrifices are trivial. We're still in the same day! Nahida! You already knew last night that we didn't break out of the Samsara? Why didn't you tell us? <laughs> Would there have been a point? You that spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't come by often, and I thought it might help you clear your minds. Paimon thought that Duke Duke did that! Oh, whatever. Guess you were looking out for us after all. <laughs> of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything to me. Uh, Paimon's flattered and everything, but maybe you're taking things a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. That's why you two have been everything to me. Get it? Nahira's talking about confusing stuff again. Anyway, that's enough chit-chat. So, Traveler, did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? Huh? Why are you scrapping your previous theory? Oh, yeah! You're right! Gosh, how did we not notice that? In a simple time loop, people's physical conditions should also reset. So, what's your new hypothesis? Mercenaries rely heavily on muscle memory. of 
a day are erased at the end of that day, then we would unwittingly relive that same day again and again. <sighs> oh! Then the beep we hear every night could just be indicating the deletion of our memories! That's why, when we wake up, everyone thinks the Sub-Zero's festival hasn't happened yet! It's already the next day, but everyone still thinks it's the day before! But muscle memory can't be erased! That's why Dia has been getting better at using her greatsword! Now everything makes sense! Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong! To put it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. That isn't simple at all! Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Right! She did help us find our latest clue after all. Let's 